Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay. Um, so, something kind of interesting sort of happened to me on Saturday. Saturday just gone. Um, and I sort of kind of want to talk about that, um, and this is going to be very much in context with like my non-binary transitional stuff, so, um, yeah. Okay, so, um, to sort of start this off, um, some of you may have noticed that sometimes my voice is a little bit lower when I'm doing these videos, and sometimes it's sort of more towards what it used to be, um, sort of in the, the higher sort of tones and pitches, um, I'm not going out of my way to vocal train, um, although I am trying to access my lower vocal range more frequently. Um, so uh, essentially, as you, as a lot of you know, I have issues with my my rib cage, um, which especially affects this bit here, um, and this bit here, and certainly. As I mentioned, I think a few times when I was first starting to get really bad with it, often felt quite tight and quite restrictive, and um, I lost the ability to project my voice properly. And I'm still, I still sort of struggle with projecting my voice properly. But the other thing that happens when this bit is really tight is that it becomes harder to access the the lower notes of your voice. So my voice was sort of steadily getting like higher and higher and higher because there was like that restriction and constriction of um, where I was able to access my voice from, uh, both in terms of being able to project my voice and in terms of pitch. Um, I have spent a lot of the last um, few months, as much as possible, when I've been able to, resting my voice and resting this sort of area. Um, so that means in work that I've been attempting as much as possible to be on stations where I, where I don't have to talk quite so much, where I can rest my voice as much as possible. Um, and that, along with, I think, binding on my days off, which does sort of help with the pressure and stuff, um, I think is it has allowed me to sort of naturally start accessing those low notes. That's not to say that my voice doesn't do whatever the hell it wants when it wants. That's why vocal training is something I'm going to find quite difficult to do um, because quite often my voice will just pitch itself wherever it wants to pitch itself and then I just I just kind of go with it. Um, as I said, it's, it's one of those things where I'm not consciously going out of my way to vocal train. But when I do notice that I'm naturally slipping into those deeper tones, I'm leaning into those deeper tones and I'm trying to make it more natural for myself to go into those deeper tones um, because I would rather my voice was pitched lower because I, I've never liked, I didn't like how high and squeaky it was getting anyway. Um, and I just like, I feel more comfortable in myself speaking in a lower range, but as I said, a lot of the reason why my voice has been going higher is because of the issues that I've been getting with my rib cage, and as you know, in the same way it's affected my ability to project my voice, it's also affected like the tone and pitch of my voice, which I was already struggling to control because I've never had the best vocal control when it comes to how my voice sounds, um, and that's just like the way that it's always been. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, so Thursday. Um, the tap in my bathroom broke, and when I say it broke, I mean it refused to turn itself off. Fortunately, I knew where the stop was in the kitchen, and there were also stops underneath the tap itself, so I was able to get into a position where there was no water coming through that tap, but I still had water from everywhere else, so I could still get on with things. Um, I then went online, uh, the style of tap that I had, pretty much being told that I would need it to be replaced, um, I looked at the setup that I had and I was kind of like, yeah, there's no way I'm doing that myself. Um, so I went online and I looked for a plumber um, and I managed to, to get one relatively quickly. Um, and when I spoke to him on the phone, I was using a lower pitched voice. Uh, it was just the voice that kind of came up of me when I was doing it. And I was like, you know, what, I'm just going to go with that. Um, and I managed to like 
do it consistently like with all the phone calls that I did with him um so yeah I was I was you know actually reasonably happy that I managed to get my voice to do what I wanted it to do um multiple times um then on the Saturday he came up to fix a tap um I was sort of like still chatting to him as he was doing it and again I was using the lower pitch voice pretty much this the one that I'm using now so <laughs> you'll have sort of an idea of roughly sort of where it was sort of pitching um and then after we'd fixed my tap um initially wanted to do a I initially wanted to do a bank transfer because I didn't have any cash on me and it would have been the easiest solution um but obviously because I haven't legally changed my name yet the name that appears on my bank accounts is my dead name so I was um, because obviously I'd been giving my new name to the plumber so I was like oh um just so just just to warn you when this comes through it's going to come through under my dead name um because I haven't had a chance to change it yet I'd actually said what my dead name was when I was you know talking to him um and I don't think he quite heard me properly, because um, his next question was, oh, I, were you married previously? <laughs> um, and you're changing it for that reason. I was like, no, no, I'm changing my first name. <laughs> That's a bit that I'm, that I'm changing. I'm changing it from, you know, what it was to uh, what I'm changing it to. Um, at which point he was like, oh, you're trans. Uh, oh no, oh you're transitioning or something along those lines. Um, and I was like, yeah. He was like, I, I, I didn't realise, um, but now that you say it, yeah, I can, I can see it a little bit in your face. Um, and I was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, I'm only a year into this transition and there's like, nothing's been done in any shape or form to alter my appearance. So either you're saying, that I naturally have a masculine looking face <laughs> or you're getting the wrong end of the stick and you think I'm transitioning the other way <laughs> in which case you're still saying there's something masculine looking about my face <laughs> I mean like no matter which way this guy thought I meant would still be wrong because it's a non-binary transition so I'm going from um female to non-binary uh, but I am yeah it, 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 it yeah so like even like no matter which way he thought it was going he, he'd been wrong um but I'm not entirely sure which way he thought it was going and I wasn't going to ask because <laughs> like I wasn't gonna go so so how possible am I um even though like everything in me is kind of like me passing as masculine has been the dream since I was a teenager and I really like really 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 want to be able to do that I don't think I do um my cute friend thinks I do more than I think I do um I mean I think like when I'm sort of like sitting in front of my mirror or when I'm taking photos of myself um I get everything just right yeah I think I think I pass as a teenage boy <laughs> I I think I pass as a young masculine adult um i don't think i pass as a masculine adult like mm, te late teens to early 20s passable maybe but even then i i would sort of question that um a lot of the reason i question that I'm like i know i don't use binder in work um but the fact that none of the new starters pretty much um bother to assume anything other than female unless i've gone out of my way to let them know what my pronouns are yeah it's it's one of those sort of situations where i'm like i want to believe that i am more passable than i am but i don't think i i, I don't think i confuse enough people <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that, I, as I said, I was sort of left afterwards, kind of, the bit of me that has wanted to pass masculine since I was a teenager, like really wanting to hyper focus and fixate on the fact that that happened and really wanting to believe that it was that direction 
Um, and then the bit of me going, no, I, I know I'm not that passable, like Binder and everything. I, I know I'm not that passable. It, he, he must have been thinking the other way. I mean, he's still saying that I've got a man face, <laughs> which is fine. I don't mind that. But like, you know, something telling you that he, he was, you know, thinking it went in that direction. And I mean, both ways is technically wrong <laughs> because non-binary. Um, but it was still that sort of general sort of feeling afterwards where I'm like, I don't know how to feel about that experience because I don't know what his initial assumption was. I know what I want his initial assumption to have been. I don't know what his initial assumption was. And then you get into this sort of tangled mess of, well, as a non-binary person, like androgyny is sort of my main aim anyway. Um, I, you know, I don't necessarily want people to be assuming non-binary because I know that's not a natural thing for people to assume. They're either going to assume masculine or feminine, and I would rather they were assuming masculine than feminine. Like even yeah, even like on the non-binary scale, I'd rather they were sort of thinking more masculine than feminine. And it's it's one of those cases where um, I have spent time questioning. Am I just um, a trans man? Um, as it, is it just a uh, binary um, transness that, that I feel? Um, because I know I do lean more towards the masculine side of things, and I know I've always leaned slightly more towards the masculine side of things. But every time I start thinking that, uh, my brain does the exact same thing it was doing when I was trying to live as a cis woman, and basically screaming, why can't I be both at me? So I know full well, but I am, you know, I am by gender, I, that is the positioning that I should have. But just because that's the positioning I should have, that I am non-binary, doesn't mean that I necessarily want full-on androgyny. To begin with, yeah, the androgyny was good because it was that, that first step of the transition. It's that first step of going, hey, I can look something other than feminine. Um, but as it's sort of gone on and I've gotten more comfortable and I've found a bit, my, bit more of my own style and I've found more things that work and, and that I like and how I like to express myself, I've realised that I have a trans-masculine expression. Um, so my expression, my um, clothing expression, my gender expression is more towards the masculine side. Um, rather than towards the androgynous side, which is fine. That's absolutely how, you know, where it can be. I'm allowed to say that I'm trans non-binary, that I'm trans by gender, that I'm trans masculine, and have them all sort of be correct, um, and all sort of mean sort of the same thing for me, and all be correct terms to use for me. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's very much one of those sort of thing where to me it's like it's very straightforward that all those things are related and connect together and it's all talking about sort of different parts of um, my identity so trans non-binary or non-binary that's the umbrella that I you know that's the umbrella that I sit under that's the easiest way for me to sort of explain how I am to people to just go oh yeah I'm just I'm non-binary um, I my gender sits outside of the gender binary and you know, people get that, it's, it's a nice, fairly straightforward thing for most people to understand. Um, trans by gender, or saying that I'm by gender, that's when I get more specific about exactly what my non binaryness is. Um, so, my, my non binaryness is less not being either, or sort of being semi one, or semi the other, or being fluid. My non binaryness is that I am both, that I feel like I am both that um, there is a feminist side to me and there is a masculine side to me and they don't have exactly equal weight but they are both there, they are both present and they should both be respected. Um, the the by genderness is me saying this is how I feel, I feel like I am both, I am both, um, therefore I need to be respected as both and view myself as both and view the, you know, if only the world could view me as both, but that's not necessarily going to happen. Um, but like other people who are interacting with me and you know um, wanting to be respectful of me should be acknowledging both sides. Um, 
Although at the moment that's more some people respecting the masculine side and everybody else still assuming the feminine side. Therefore, I kind of just allow the people who only respect the masculine side to only respect the masculine side so that I get balance, even though it's not like general balance, it is a balance. There are certain things that I do, um, which I do specifically to respect my own internal balance because I know I'm going to be in a situation where the feminine is going to be seen, the feminine is going to be highlighted and the masculine is going to be ignored. So it's very much a case of, um, yeah, in an ideal world, an ideal situation, everybody would be using both for me. Right now, the ones who are specifically using masculine for me, I'm letting just use masculine. I want to just be using masculine because I offset and off balances all the femininity that I get thrown at me. <laughs> all the feminist stuff that get thrown at me. And like, yeah, it, it, it's like there's, le- there's not enough of this to balance out this at the moment. And it's kind of like, yeah, this, yeah, ideally this, I want that. But at the moment it's like that and it's like that. <laughs> Why can't I be both? So I'm 100% sure that I'm supposed to be both. 
but I am a trans non-binary person who is by gender and has a masculine expression, so I can, I feel as though the way I can talk about my gender is that I am non-binary, by gender, trans masculine, and um, not be incorrect, or like have trans by, um, <laughs> trans non-binary, trans by gender, trans masculine, and like basically be like, yeah, all of that works, or like, you know, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I, I know I'm sort of like getting a little bit off track and all over the place, um, from, from the kind of point that I'm sort of trying to make, but basically what I'm saying is, I really want that encounter that I had at the weekend to basically be confirmation that I am passively masculine, because even though I am non-binary and by gender, being passively masculine is something that is important to me because my expression is masculine. And even though I am both, I'm, I'm definitely both, and like my brain has been screaming at me for so long that I'm both. Sorry about that, the doorbell rang. Uh, wasn't for me, but I figured I should go down and answer it. Anyway, um, anyway, as I was saying, um, so yeah, even though my brain has been screaming at me for years that I am both, um, even though I'm very certain that I am both, like 100% both, that doesn't mean that you know, one side isn't slightly more dominant than the other side, um, and in my case, my masculine side is fractionally more dominant than my feminine side, and my feminine side isn't overly feminine anyway, <laughs> so I feel like using the label transmasculine is correct for me, um, and then saying that I express my gender in a masculine way is also correct for me so to have been in a situation this weekend where potentially I was passively masculine is it's something that I really really hope is the case but I don't know and because I don't know and because I wasn't going to ask um I'm now in a sort of situation where I'm like I don't know how to feel about that situation I don't know what he thought and what he meant and it's just this messy kind of confusion over what I should feel and how I should feel about it and yeah yeah that's really pretty much where I am with it right now um so I'm sorry this one kind of got a bit like randomly ran, ran, rambly and probably a little bit confusing in places um it's just like the way my train of thought kind of went. Um, I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.